Hello, and welcome to the August 2017 edition of the Bizarre Briefing. I'm Bryce Castillo. We have a packed studio today. I'm joined, as usual, by Brent Hughes. Hey, that's me. I'm this uh, one. That's right. Uh, mm-hmm. Max Gillen. How's it going? Uh, Jeff Schusler. Thank you for making it out. Ah. And fresh from uh, uh, Colorado? Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado is David Rowan. David, yeah. welcome to the welcome to the show. Hey, hey, thank you. Uh, sit, down. sit down, sit down. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so, David, you you just like you just moved to Austin, right? Uh, my first day in Austin was Sunday. Today's Tuesday, so yes. Yeah. Uh, oh man, I just realized my uh, the day that I moved to Austin would have been. Also a Sunday? <laughs> on uh, It would have been September 10th. Oh, really? The same day? Oh, no. Same exact day? Same day. Yeah. Same day. Same day. Because yeah. I remember my dad flew back. Okay, this is a very weird thing to remember it by, but my dad flew back home. We drove down here from Virginia. Mm-hmm. He flew back on 9-11, and I remember that being a, like a, no kind way. Of a weird thing. Wow. Yeah. Wait, on the actual 9-11? <laughs> no, that was, oh, okay. <laughs> that was 16 years <laughs> like, ago. Uh, no, no. It was it was three years ago now. Oh, okay. Um, where from Virginia? Uh, the Chesapeake. That was area. almost a sentence. Chesapeake. <laughs> uh, the Chesapeake Norfolk area. Whence Virginia? <laughs> well, I think we've talked about this, right? Because you're from uh, Central. I, I lived in Burke, Virginia, okay. which is near DC for a bit. Gotcha. Uh, uh, this is the Bizarre Briefing. Hello and welcome. This is the behind the scenes podcast on all things bizarre magic. That means scam school and modern rogue and uh, uh, scam stuff. And this show, the Bizarre Briefing, is a production of scams of, of bizarre magic. Mm. So that's mm. getting a little a little bit of meta for you. Uh, also, things like what other things are there? Uh, the podcasts like Night Attack and Cord Killers. Stop me if you've heard this before. Okay. Uh, stop. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, there we go. <laughs> we have we have oh, yeah, heard this. Here, really. yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is our once a month behind the scenes podcast. So uh, let's just go down the list here. Um, sure. Uh, we are in month. We've just started month three of of Patreon for Modern Rogue. I believe oh, Ooh, yeah. that sounds right. We started month three. Congratulations. That, and sounds, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about accurate. And um, one of the things that we. Although kind of weird that we had like a monthly roundup for the first month, but not for the second. Okay. Well, I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're, at, you're, you're at home. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have better to do? Well, I'll, I'll put one out. Part, part of it is like I could I would do it if it was not going to be news stuff. But actually, now that we're here, this is good because I can get the information that I need for this monthly roundup. Welcome to, ah. the, welcome to the monthly roundup ah. Patreon Modern Rogue Corner Hour of the Bizarre Briefing Podcast. Minute. Sure. Uh, uh, part of the Patreon is that we are going to send out shirts to people at a certain tier and above. I believe it's the is it thirty or thirty five dollars? Thirty. Thirty. Yes. And uh, we have been trying to get ahead of it so that we could say, "Hey, we're going to send shirts out." Um, mm-hmm. Is what is is there a status on what we should be doing? I know Brant, you made a design. Yeah. Okay. So here's here's how this situation went down. Oh shit! Um, <laughs> and I, I I'm sure we probably touched on it last month. Yeah. Uh, it was it was we came up with the idea. We had a quarterly meeting and we came up with the idea. Hey, it would be cool if patrons had an exclusive shirt. And then Brian was like, Okay, that's not the 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 mug that I was thinking of, but I can live with that. And then we were like, okay, cool. And then a week later, I was like, hey, we really need to figure this out because I know how this company works where <laughs> nobody, nobody's going to do anything. And mm-hmm. then it's going to be the last week of the quarter. And then everybody's going to be like, oh, the shirt. right, we, yeah. we have to do a shirt. Yeah. Or yeah. even worse, it'll get past that time. And then our patrons will be like, hey, where are we supposed to get shirts? And we'll be like, uh, yeah, uh, yep. Yeah. Um, so I've been saying that for like forever. And then we uh-huh. had another quarterly meeting, and then I was like, "Hey, what's uh, how's how's this coming along?" And then and then Brian was like, "Well, we have these these old designs from when we commissioned our last shirts, mm. so maybe we'll just use those." And I went, "Hmm, those weren't. I feel like those weren't used for a reason. I'm not a big fan of all of those shirts." Yeah, and a lot of them looked very similar to the shirts that we picked. Agreed. Yeah, that's true. Um, they look nice, but they it, did look similar. For yeah, sure. they're yeah. they're really really nice. Uh, but it's it's like if I was a patron and I got a shirt that was similar or like so similar, you would riot. Well, I, I would just be like, I don't oh. want to deal with those yeah. emails. No, <laughs> but I'd be like, okay, that's what I can expect for this. It's you know, so yeah. so I, I wanted I wanted the first one to be like kind of special. You know, I wanted it to be interesting and different. 
and stuff like that. So I think so. You went and and made an illustration of Brian and Jason. Uh, I, are we gonna debut it here on the on the program? Sure, oh, I, I guess. It's pretty cool. Here we go. It's That's, this is uh, really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's Brian with the Nerf gun and a, the homemade spear and a, a, the gas mask on the left, and then Jason with the parabolic mic and a, and a long sword on the right. I like I like that you gave Jason very high wa- high waisted pants. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's got his very high pants, which is pretty good. Uh, and then like a a really cool logo. Oh wow, this is really high res. That it's, is it's, kick ass. It's, yeah, that's actually a, the low res <laughs> render of <laughs> that. Jesus, uh, it almost uh, reminds me of like a adventure show, like kind of the adventure show. Yeah, type uh, treatment. Adventure time. Adventure time. Adventure time. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it's called, <laughs> the regular time show. Um, <laughs> Close enough. But yeah, I, actually, I I sort of modeled that text off of old like D and D text that I would draw for certain things, which was at the time modeled off of uh, Adventure Time. So yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Uh, this is really cool, uh, and I think I think like especially this. So it's like a white. It's like a white stroke on a black fill. Uh, which I think looks really good. I, I'm never a fan of like a white shirt with a graphic on it. Mm. Personally, uh, I prefer either a black shirt or like a specific color of a fill mm. for a shirt. Yeah. And I think this this looks really good on on black. Yeah, and it's it's sort of reminiscent of of uh, another shirt that I own. Um, <laughs> So I kind of drew some inspiration from that. Right. Did you plan that? Oh. Uh, I, I mean, that was, <laughs> that was kind of the, the jumping off point for it a little bit. Uh, yeah. We've talked yeah. A, a lot, I think, about that uh, Joel and Ellie shirt on this show. Yes. I, 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 it's a good shirt. I love it dearly. It's a very good shirt. Um, um, so, yeah. So, yeah, so, so I, I made that design, and I actually made a few de- designs before that uh, that were variations on that. Um, and I basically, it was like... Okay, here's the design. Go for it. Thanks. <laughs> and then sure. I I got like a brief thing of Brian, which was like, great, love it. And then that was it. And then I was like, okay, I don't know what's, what I uh, do. What do we do next? Uh, I don't I don't make shirts here. I design stuff, and uh, you know you you guys made shirts before, and so what's going on? And then like nothing, just absolute silence. Okay. So. Cool. It sounded like I talked to Brian before our Modern Rogue shoot this past week, mm. and it sounded like uh, our, our general plan is we're going to put them out uh, at the very start of next month because uh, technically uh, patrons are paying uh, back a month and not forward a month, right? So when uh-huh. you when you pay it the first month of... September, you're actually paying for all of August. For the previous month, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we want to send it to people who paid for any month in that quarter. Okay. Uh, and not just send the shirt out in the quarter and then cut off the last month of the quarter. Gotcha. Um, so we'll send them out first first of next, or not first of next month, but early next month. Early next month, okay. Um, a, little, a little Halloween treat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it sounded like for this first one, we're gonna give, we're gonna try to give people the op- option to uh, preview it first, and then if they just want a regular, normal, modern rogue shirt, they have the option to swap out for that. Okay, um, interesting. Uh, which I think is, a, it's it's a good idea, but it, it can get a little tricky if you're doing like uh, batch orders. Mm-hmm. Of of shirts, and then if you have like a lot of people swap out, then the, that kind of kind of sucks. But yeah, um, uh, we may also I, I uh, one element of this is going to have to be getting that information from people. Yes, and if we're saying that, you know, uh, they uh, we will have to wait for basically for pledges to process, and then reach out to people who have have a valid pledge through mm-hmm. that quarter. Sure. So early early October may turn. We'll it won't see, be we'll, the first week. We'll see. It, yeah, it, it, it might be it'll probably take way. a l- little bit of time. Right. Um. And uh. And yeah, we'll we'll, we'll also have to reach out for people for for shirt sizes and, and yeah. addresses if they don't have that filled out. Uh, they should have addresses in Patreon. So if you are yeah. a patron and you're expecting a shirt, I would say make sure that your address is correct in Patreon. And also double check that your payment options are valid. We've we've had a, a a supporter at the hundred dollar level, which has had his card declined every month. 
Right. Since we started the Patreon. Nice. Uh, I'm working on it, Brant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's unfortunate, but but we also have that for Cord Killers, because Cord Killers we do, uh, if you're $5 an episode or up, uh, you are put in the credits of the end of the episode, and we update it every two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are always people who who's, who's things have lapsed, and it, they just let it sit lapsed mm-hmm. forever. Um, and, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I think I don't. I don't think it's someone trying to be. I'd like to think it's not someone trying to be sneaky. Well, I just went to IKEA the other day, yeah, and I was like, I'm going to buy me some IKEA stuff. Mm-hmm. And a good uh, idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, good IKEA. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> I go to pay. Face <laughs> pump. <laughs> <laughs> I go to pay, and the payments declined, and I know there's money there, but it was just one of those things where it was like, we don't think you're buying furniture from IKEA. We're going to stop this transaction, <laughs> oh, right? Right. So then I have to spend 20 minutes on the phone with the bank telling them, no, I actually no, I mean, did want to buy yeah. Ikea. And uh, they're like, are you sure? Because there's, maybe there's better furniture places out there. And I was like, you're, you're, a, you're a bank. Well, Why are you ever- not? <laughs> yeah. not your choice. Yeah. I used to so, have a problem where I would buy video games at GameStop and then I'd buy them off Steam and my bank would be like, well, wait, are you in California or are you right. in Austin? Oh, and yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I might be anywhere. It's <laughs> Just let me have my money. Yes. It's a globally yeah. connected world. Give me my sofa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was a sofa. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Ikea's got a good sofa. Mm. I, I got my sofa from Ikea, and that is... It's a, it's a Freighton the sofa, Freighton. Okay. The, I think. Uh, I don't remember the name of the one that I got. I remember it being like the second cheapest one, because the cheapest one looked like... There's a like Carlstad. I think me. it's the Carlstad. Is it? Does it have a wooden legs? No, uh, no, no. This one's like really low to the ground. Okay. It's got flat arms on the side, so you can like okay. put stuff there. Oh yeah, it's like one solid. It looks like one solid piece. Uh, that... kind kinda, kinda. kinda. Eight, Eighteen minutes later, like, is the yellow one? Yeah. Is it the yellow one? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so what color so is that's stitching. So that's yeah. that's shirt updates. Yeah, uh, I, I think I think really the the next thing for that is just to hold Brian's feet to the fire and and just be like, hey, this is done. Make sure that it gets done. Make uh, sure that it happens. Um, and and Slider asks, uh, uh, any chance that there'll be a way to buy the shirt back uh, if you back at a lower level? Um, I liked the idea of once once everybody gets fulfilled and stuff. If we have like leftover batches, you know, not Just only selling them. Yeah, not only can we give them to to friends of the show and stuff like that, but we can also have like a really limited run sell. Uh, and yeah, maybe maybe that gets sent out to lower backers before it goes public. Mm-hmm. Um, or something like that, and then once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a short update. Uh, keep an eye out um, for that. Uh, so big news over this past week, uh, or rather past month, uh, and I think we, I mean, we've talked about it. We've been talking about it pretty much since since Jeff showed up <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, about taking Scam School and part of Scam School Remix off of Brant's plate, and now we are officially uh, in that mode. Uh, so we're it's it's now me and and Jeff going back and forth editing scam schools, uh, which leaves Brant more time to work on Modern Rogue and and Modern Rogue Patreon supplementary stuff. Uh, so we'll start with Jeff. Uh, we we were go we were on a three week cycle mm-hmm. uh, because it was going between me you and Brant. Mm-hmm. Uh, how is the two week cycle going for you? We've had fits and spurts with it, but it's like we're we're kind of like this is it now. Like, do you feel like you're finding that rhythm, that rhythm's ca- like catching with you? No. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> it's basically oh. like one one week of ah and one week of oh God, oh God, yeah. oh God. So I'm still trying to get that to a place where it's like, I don't know. I don't know what the right noises are to make to just be like a regular person sure. every week. But, but, but balanced. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, – uh, I, I, I think I suggested something like this at the quarterly meeting and the offer still stands of like uh, checking in and, and holding your feet to an artificial deadline every week yeah. so that either a, the episode or an ad is done so that they don't fall all at the same day. Because I know like I just had that last week where I, I didn't have a chance to get stuff done before Dragon Con. So I came back on Monday sick as a dog mm. uh, and had the episode and an ad to get done and it was like... You know, e- e- even like having uh, uh, my feet and my 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 sea legs basically for Sam School. Yeah, uh, that's that's a lot of stuff to get done in you know a day and a half, two days. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's the actual 
uh, work of doing an individual episode is getting easier. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the thing that I find most difficult about it is that I still rely a lot on you and <clears throat> I still rely, rely a lot on you guys for feedback. Sure. And since Scam School comes out on Wednesday, that feedback a lot of times is happening on Monday and Tuesday, which is especially busy for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, it's just a very kind of, I don't know. It. I'd like to get to a point where there's not a crisis in my life every two weeks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, but when, maybe that's just the job and I'll just get used to having a crisis every two well, weeks. Well, <laughs> it, it shouldn't be a crisis, yeah. right? Like the best, the best scenario is where it is paced out. Uh, it's 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 able to be better paced out for you. And that was like the one like positive thing about having Vessel was like the even if it would be an off week for us on YouTube, we would have to have the episode itself done yeah. the week before because they don't that we didn't run our ads on Vessel, but they needed early access. So mm. it that was a that was not really an artificial deadline. That was a very real deadline, but it was pacing out the totality of the project in half. Sure, um, and. That was pretty rigid and not a lot of fun to get into, uh, but also it was it was really good timing because you know on a vessel week it's like it can come out late or whenever it needs to as long as it says Wednesday on the clock. Sure, like you're probably good, um, and and no, nobody would see it anyway. But it needs to be there. There's a piece of paper that says it needs to be there, um, and and I think that has helped out a lot with getting rid I mean would you would you agree Brant that like that helped make stuff not be a panic every other week yeah and I, I mean that's it seems kind of like a kind of like a, a no-brainer where it's like oh yeah you should you should not compress 98% of your work into 5% of your time <laughs> right you know um, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was nice because uh, like artificial deadlines have never worked for me because I just go yeah well what if I just don't hit that deadline then it's fine because it's not real right. so I don't care there's no immediate um, consequence yeah whereas at the very least with vessel it was like if if you totally blow it off somebody will send you an email and be like hey dog what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I'll be like oh sorry I. I should, probably should have done something. But. Or like with with Vessel, there could be a very serious because Vessel was trying to take their week exclusivity thing pretty seriously, to the mm -hmm. point where uh, if someone was mad enough, if we screwed up bad enough, and someone was really got it in their craw, uh, they could say, "Hey, you don't get to release this until Thursday on YouTube because fuck mm. you, you got it in late." Yeah, uh, which would be bad because we've been pretty good, not perfect, but pretty good about being on Wednesdays for the whole run of the show. Uh, and, and so that's that. There's there. It's it's like there's a chance of something very serious happening, and and uh, that serious thing not being the end of the world, but still just being pie on your face. So yeah, uh, you know, if, if 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 there's something that we can do externally from your work process, and that's that's the other part is like we all we work from home for the editing and stuff. So it's like you don't have the social pressure of like, I am in the workplace. Mm -hmm. The people who are working are right next to me. I, the, the, the boss is walking around and might ask me what's going on. I need to be making progress, which is uh very, which is, a, is a, a, uh, a, a system of society that works for more, Shit, most that, businesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would have absolutely no problem if I had just somebody in a suit standing behind yeah. me. Maybe that's what I should do is just hire somebody in like really yeah. authoritative to just stand behind yeah. me and make sure I, that I bet that's a big business, right? You could go on Craigslist for that. <laughs> oh, I hired you know, to start that business and then, yeah, uh, sure. yeah, I hired a virtual assistant to wake me up for months. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Hey, that's, you so know, she called from India every morning and gave wow. me the, the news headlines and the weather. Huh. And, huh. uh, yeah. And I was just like, I'm having trouble waking up. I need to answer to somebody yeah. other than just myself. So I went, it's your job to wake me up every morning and I will pay you to do so. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's the sort of thing where like, it's coming through your phone. I know when my phone goes off, uh, well, now it's different because my phone only rings with spam messages. But like you, you get like there's a certain specific type of tension that comes up when you hear different sounds from your phone. Mm -hmm. And it, when it's when it's the phone calling, uh, it's 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 tension, it, right? right? It, it it will get you out of bed and it will will get your your heart starting and get the day going. Your heart stops when you sleep? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep in a casket. Uh, you know, I really don't like coming out during these daytime shoots. To answer but, codes yeah. from home, um, I have looked into agile development techniques to manage workloads, but I found it to be, I wanted like a, a nice, clear introductory primer or primer if you're What fancy. is, uh, really quickly, what's, what's agile? 
Uh, well, basically just a way to get, it's like getting things done for project development. So okay. there's a, there's a simple system that you follow, uh, that allows you to have like, um, you manage the time that it takes to do individual parts and who's in charge of those things. And it's all done, uh, usually I think on a, a board is often, uh, the case, but, uh, yeah, if, if codes from home, if you know a, a link that sh that's like a, a awesome introduction to this that I can get through in five minutes, I'll look at it again. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so, uh, on the same topic, uh, now that uh, Scan School is is uh, with Jeff Brandt, yeah, huh? You've been at it for what, like a week or two? Is that right? Um, maybe for, a little longer. Maybe longer. maybe a little bit longer, but less than a month, I think. How is that going for you? Well, uh oh. I just started. <laughs> I just started The Witcher Three, so oh, it's like no. it's like all the, all the time that I gained from oh. not doing scam school is now like doubled in The Witcher. Okay, uh, See, I, Parkinson's Law, I think is what they call now it. Now I understand. <laughs> it took so yeah. long for me to see. Just. We've talked before about uh, you and Skyrim. Is that right? Uh huh. And oh, how bad. how long straight were you playing Skyrim? Was it? Two weeks? Uh, prob probably less than two weeks, like a week and a half. Maybe two weeks, yeah. But mm -hmm. you were playing it straight, and you... Just like every every day, many hours per day. Yeah. Um, it's great. It's great that everyone has a hobby and an it's outlet. Great. It's great. It's great. Uh, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I mean, I maybe put 50 hours into The Witcher 3 this past week. I was that all okay. week? Uh, <laughs> all right, now, hold on. I'll have to do some math on this one, uh, so, uh, otherwise, uh -huh. the, the, <laughs> uh, are you are you feeling better? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh, I feel great. <laughs> I would love to just go home right now. Oh well, that's <laughs> and get work done. <laughs> um, no, I mean it's it definitely it, it has definitely freed up some time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and and I've I've been able to put a little bit more work into modern rogue it's it's weird because i feel like um even even the the witcher aside um i i think a, a big portion of of this shift was to get more episodes of modern rogue out but i feel like we're in this weird mid range where i feel like i could get one episode of modern rogue done in uh not half a week, but three quarters of a week. So if if we were like, oh, let's do two episodes per week, I don't I don't think that's really viable. Mm -hmm. But I could do more than one per week, which I guess theoretically means I could I could start getting ahead soon. Yeah. Um, which would be nice. And uh, and yeah, it's it's weird because we have we have so many episodes that are just like thirty minutes long, twenty minutes long, and those just take an eternity to make. Um, and. Yeah, it's interesting. I I'm really optimistic that this extra time will allow me to not just work constantly through the night, and will allow me to get like to sleep and eat and function. Uh, actually, <laughs> yeah, actually go to sleep when the sun is down. Yeah, uh, which would be nice. Uh, but I I don't know. For me, I feel like it's still kind of early in the process, so I'm still sort of adjusting my schedule uh, and figuring out what exactly that means okay well we will check in next month uh on how once, this is going once i've beaten the witcher if i'm yes. if i'm up at 3 a.m and i check in on slack it's like this guy over here just, <laughs> just everybody else is gone and yeah. then brand hughes here we are yeah. anybody need anything it's three in the morning yeah <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, somebody recognized me from uh, the podcast that I occasionally do. That's right. You do uh, medicine, um, right? Yeah. Brian was Sorry, I, I, I was moving, so we'll have another one out tonight or tomorrow. So That's thanks cool. for saying hello. Uh, we were talking about Modern Rogue. Uh, we Vaughn. just did a shoot this weekend. Was that this weekend? Yep, Sunday. Oh, oh how'd that go? How does that? That feels... So two days ago. It, it does not feel like two days ago. I, the sickness... I'm still sick from, from these conventions, which we'll get into, but mm. time is... Time is moving at an incredibly weird pace for me between being sick and some stupid current events. Uh, but uh, we, we shot on Sunday two episodes of the long-awaited Krav Maga. Yeah. Krav Maga. Krav Maga. Krav Maga. If you're not familiar, go to youtube.com slash scam stuff and watch the extended outtakes entitled Krav Maga. Yeah. There you go. 
we, uh, I was really uh, like, A, very cool. Very cool techniques made mm-hmm. a lot of sense. Uh, it's the sort of thing where we're shooting them, and w- because we are doing cam ops, like I'm paying very heavy attention to the movements and the physicality and the and and the full body motion. And it was the sort of thing where like the moves were pretty st- pretty like straightforward, you know. Mm-hmm. Like it's something that you get with a lot of practice, but uh, they were they were pretty straightforward. And also, we filmed them very very fast. Yeah, which is a nice thing. Yeah, usually usually episodes take like an hour to record. Right. Sometimes two. So, sometimes sometimes six. three. Um, That's when you're not getting shot at, right? Yeah, and yeah. this is also like assuming that it doesn't take multiple days to record, which has happened. Um, but yeah, these went through both. We shot two episodes, and they were both under twenty minutes. Under twenty minutes each. Yeah. Uh, and like the only reason we like we were gonna do four. And the only reason we didn't do four is because our main instructor, she's have, having some back issues right now. Yeah. And so she she sort of had to tap out <laughs> um, on, on, on doing the other ones. But they were so fast. That place was really nice. They knew exactly what they were doing. And they were really straightforward. Like, the mm-hmm. guys really picked up on it very quickly. Yeah. I think, I think those are really cool videos just in, in terms of, like, showing off the technique. Oh, man, it's so hard to shoot stuff where people move around a lot. Sure. Because, like, the uh, the master shot was like, oh. oh, I looked over and, yep, half of the people are off the frame now, I guess. So, hold on, let me oh, run yeah, over and that... readjust while they're in the middle of demonstrating stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's always tricky. That's tough. It, that That's the sort of thing where it's like, if we had, like, one more set of hands on those shoots... Yeah, stuff little little stuff like that would be would be alleviated. Yeah, um, we we've gotten multiple people within the past couple of months asking if if they can be a PA. So maybe maybe we'll just reach out and see if mm. if if we can bring 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 some interns. Well, not interns, PAs. Uh, anyway, so Krav Maga is coming coming soon, uh, or rather, we just shot it and and they're now in the bucket. Yeah, episodes will probably come out for those in a little over a month. I think I think this week I'm gonna push up the. Um, uh, our next Hema episode with the the dagger fighting, uh-huh. um, and then so that'll that'll offset the the warrior stuff. So that way we can start getting some of those done. Yeah. Uh, so cool. David, yes, uh, we we mentioned it at the start of the show, though I guess we didn't really contextualize it very much. You've moved to ta- to Austin, yes, and it was a very quotidian thing to do. <laughs> Ooh, wow, we get some four dollar words. Uh, uh, but but like uh, um, I, 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 I think I think we've talked yeah. a little bit before about you joining the company, at least offhandedly, mm-hmm. um, in in previous episodes. But like, can you give the quick situation of like what like you moved here mm-hmm. and now you're working. Uh, on on scam stuff. Yep. Um, can you can you give us a little background on like you and and what's what we can look forward to? Uh, sh- sure. So I lived in Denver and now I'm wor- I'm here and I'm working on scam stuff. Okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right. Moving Great. On. That's, Great. Well, I started working with scam stuff um, a few months ago, mm-hmm. and was working remotely, and uh, we just thought we could do more if I was here. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I talked to Brian about it recently, and I we would, we'd kind of mentioned doing it a little bit later, but we we hyper accelerated it um, a couple weeks ago. Because and so in about, Christmas time is coming up, Black Friday, yeah, time all that up, stuff, yeah, exactly. Stuff, yeah. And so um, he was able to, you know, make things happen faster. Uh, and yeah. I looked up, you know, apartments that were available, and there happened to be one right around the corner and oh. uh, uh you know I applied got approved and just everything sort of um Worked slid out. into place yeah that's awesome was, uh th- so you 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 have a history in magic are you were you, were you a performing magician or were you working on like do you, well am, once upon a time in a previous lifetime I was a performing magician okay um and then I transitioned into being a hypnotist it's kind of a Slippery slope or a lubricious slope, sure. if you will, <laughs> to, from one to the other. But I'll tell you the difference is um, uh, the check 
the paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so I did uh, project graduation hypnosis shows for a while, and then, um, and so that was my magic, and then hypnosis stuff, and then I did graphic design on the side. Uh, done a lot of different odd jobs interspersed in between, but there have been some other things I think that have that have kind of uh, the the the, the um, cocktail of work that I've done I think is has has given me a a a, uh, a uh, broad background in in the things that uh, that will be um, valuable for scam stuff you know so some yeah. of the magic stuff obviously makes sense. Um, but you also have a design background, so you can design background keep an eye out on, on, specifically in web design too. So that's good for the site. A uh, little bit in marketing and copywriting. Yeah. And, By the way, yeah. we uh, scam stuff got like a fresh coat of paint. Like, yeah, I gave a little fresh coat. Recently, a, a quick, a quick screen, coat, of, yeah. coat of paint. Yeah, it took a took a second, but. Uh, and it, it's um, it, it's maybe not the full redesign that I think Brand has been after for a while, but yeah, it's a little bit of a, a graphic overhaul, and it looks really nice and clean. Yeah, um, it took a while to actually make that red line, the slash through the prices. Oh, really? At, at a diagonal angle. Oh, weird. It would usually just go straight through. But you, it's actually going and up. I'm, yeah, I wanted bit. it to look like it was crossed out. That's so. one of those weird things with web, yeah. W- yeah. web and titling, or rather, text control. It's like it's. You would think it would be super easy to be like, hey, just make a line, but it's not. Yeah, and even that checkout button on there is uh, actually an uh, – since it's a Shopify store, that checkout button image is a, an advertisement image because that's where I could upload it to and then I could just reference it from there. And, oh, and really? And kind of placed it. Yeah, yeah, so I found out since I put it up there that I can I can actually upload to a, a, a more proper place on the site, <laughs> but I, I sort of uh, hacked the site to put that there in, I, the, in the meantime. I love the idea the, that people are going to the site and they have to click a banner, uh, technically click a banner ad. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> oh, you know, now that you mention it, I wonder if they have like ad block. They're like, where the hell is the yeah, checkout the button? Checkout? Like, no. <laughs> yeah. well, if that's the case, it'll it'll all resolve itself in the next day or two. So awesome. No words. Uh, no words. No worries. No, worries. no words either. <laughs> So. Uh, well, we're excited to have you around. You yeah. know, you, you've been on Scam School many times before. Yeah. Uh, recently, I, uh, you're going to be on this I'm, coming week's episode. I'm going to yep. be on this coming. Oh, so uh, mm-hmm. what's that? Wednesday? Tomorrow? That's Wednesday. That's yep. right. That's the uh, wow. prisoner switch nice. puzzle. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, where I solve a riddle in less than eight seconds, isn't it? Is, where, is <laughs> my record I think time? Exactly I think, which yeah. one it is. <laughs> too, right. Which is so weird. <laughs> it's a very short episode. It's just. <laughs> Uh, uh, any other stuff yeah. about like what you're looking forward to just while you're here? Uh, moving in, like yeah. actually getting settled. I have yeah, just boxes Tuesday. and moving boxes just, uh, and boxes, and yeah. I uh, I have to go home. And I, like all I did was uh, the first night I slept on the floor. Yeah. Um, last night I actually slept in the bed. That was the only thing that got put together. And so it's just going to be uh, you know a week or two of, of finding the free time to to do that. I mean like. Uh, I, Free time tonight will probably be on editing this podcast, um, not this podcast, but the one that uh, the uh, minimum. Vaughn men- yeah, yeah. mentioned. Um, and then this podcast is not going to edit. It's just going up like it. Just edit out every time I'm addressed. It just cuts. <laughs> so it's like I'm the guy that never talks on the thing. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you. Um, I'll tell you. Well, I don't know. Do you, have you moved around apartments a lot? Uh, yeah. I mean, I yeah. think I, I've lived in maybe 20 different places in, um, or more in my lifetime. I mean, my Father was in the Air Force, so oh, I'm just so kind of used to moving, to moving around a lot. Because I'm really bad about unboxing and unpacking when I move. You're bad about ever doing it? Like it just stays in boxes? I'll, I'll pull or, out the stuff that I need and oh, use right. a lot. And just keep the boxes. And, then I'll, yeah. well, and I'll keep other boxes full of stuff. Uh, and it's it gets to the point where it's like, I just need to get rid of these mm. these boxes of old toiletries that I've never yeah. used. And they're probably going to start smelling. Or Yeah. Uh, there was one place I moved into that I never really moved in. I just I, I lived there for two years. and Wow. And uh, there were, I have like twenty six boxes of books. It's kind of sad. Oh, and I just mm. I went. That's sad, but that's that's heavy. That's uh, impressive. It's it's very sad. But right, moving it in. Yeah, yeah like I was very. I mean, that was the only time I'm sad to have them is when uh, I have to haul them up uh, um, to the fourth floor without an elevator Oof, uh, in dude. the Texas heat. Yeah. Um, I actually I had to, I was hauling boxes and then sitting down and taking like ten breaths and then going. Give me two more. Give me two more boxes. Yeah, and then you gotta I just do yeah, it. Got to do it. And I was doing that the other day, spring cleaning my yeah. apartment and just getting rid of a bunch of shit that was I wasn't using, 
Uh, and I just had to be like, I can, I got to fill up my car now because I'm going to run out of energy, yeah. you know, in 10 minutes if I stop and take a break. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, is I actually thought about that when I sat down. I was like, it's probably worse for me to worse. sit down too long because mm-hmm. there's like blood pooling and then the energy shifts and you just Your can't get back up. But down. then again, yeah, I didn't want to pass out. I was like, you know, for, tomato, uh, tomato, uh, right? Whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we're so. happy to have you, David. Thank you. Uh, yeah. and, and we hope to hear more from you. In the future. Okay, good night. See you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, the live stuff. We mentioned it last month. Uh, we are coming up on the, the, the end of live show season. Uh, we just did Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and we did our live Night Attack show, which uh, was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, and the live, the live Night Attacks always go off the rails a little bit. Uh, to the point, mm. like, we... Mm. We, I think we got it out of the way early with Night Attack where uh, instead of like a musical guest or any sort of prepared or even just starting the show cold, uh, a group of um, uh, cosplayers who were dressed up as the Stonecutters from The Simpsons uh, came down the aisle and sang the Stonecutter song from The Simpsons episode to like kick off the show. And it was, and they were like, we're not ready to do it. They did not expect it. And they were all like, on different beats and stuff. Uh, but uh, it was a lot of fun. We met British Shark, who, oh, I, can't, I have a secret. So uh, uh, I have a secret, so I'm going to tell it online on the Yeah, right, just right broadcasting yeah. the internet. Yeah. <laughs> nope. uh, uh, so part of uh, the episode was we played a game, a real or fake game uh, with British town names. Mm. And uh, not long into it, a uh, so, uh, the person who was later named British Shark uh, came up and was pronouncing the, the the words in a British accent for us, and uh, uh, he he was wearing his outfit was uh, pretty uh, specific. He was wearing like a shark head, a shark's head. Uh, he was wearing like a yellow F Society T shirt, like a Mo- Mr. Robot T shirt. These really shiny vinyl black pants, and a uh, a not a a a, a a, a furry tail like a, it looked like a raccoon colored tail uh, apparently he was a wolf shark and that was uh, the bit I don't know if a wolf shark is an actual shark but uh, he, uh, apparently mm. that guy is the same guy from years and years ago from their like their first dragon con night attack uh, who was wearing the xenomorph costume Mm. Um, and apparently, apparently that guy's tell is he always wears those shiny pants. Mm. Hmm. Uh, but, uh, that was a fun little thing. Cause I, I think I still don't even know who that person is specifically, but I did find out he's the xenomorph. So, uh, if you, uh, uh, I, I just WikiLeaks him half, I half yeah. WikiLeaks him. <laughs> Whoa. Nice. I half doxed him. I oxed yeah. him. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was a lot of fun, and so that's out on the Night Attack feeds. Now yeah. we're going to have a new episode tonight in a couple of hours, and uh, coming up this month in in like a week, in about a week or so, uh, we've got Scoop Fest in Las Vegas. Uh, so if you uh, are a fan of Night Attack or uh, the Hey Scoops, the Matt Mattingly's Ice Cream Social podcast, uh, they're doing a whole multi day event in Las Vegas. And there will be a live night attack there. We're going to be doing Don't Get Brodied, which I think people were kind of a little uh, sad that we didn't do Don't Get Brodied at Dragon Con because I think they normally expect it. What's Don't Get Brodied? So Don't Get Brodied is an audience bit where people come up to the microphone and, and everyone on the panel uh, uh, holds out their thumbs uh-huh. and, and the audience member tells a story. And the, the moment anyone on the panel thumbs down, they are done. They, they're you kill off. them. You kill them. They're, you murder them on dead. stage. Okay. Uh, uh, and so they're timed. And so if yeah. you can say the longest or if you can tell the story the longest, if it's interesting enough to go on the longest, uh, you win. And if you lose, you get Brody Quest play. Does it have to be compelling or can it just be garrulous? Oh, uh, can I just garrulous? Just uh, you just have to know your audience. <laughs> it, could, it, could, it could be either. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> just can they just be excessively chatty about trivial matters? Oh, no, no, no. There is no yeah. there's no room for fat okay. on don't get Brody. You've mm-hmm. got to be like in and out, yeah. you know, so that's uh, that's going to come up for the Hey Scoops Fest. Uh, so check it out. I think it's at hey scoop hey scoops dot com. Look it up um, because that's very cool. Apparently, there's a lot of crossover between Night Attack fans and the Ice Cream Social fans. So I think we're going to have a lot of a lot of fun. 
in Las Vegas, and I think we're saying an extra day to teach to teach somebody magic. I don't I don't know exactly the whole thing, but it sounds like I'm gonna get a free day in Las Vegas. So interesting. Uh, I wonder. Yes. That sounds like a who who is this person that's being taught uh, the dark arts? He's he's a friend inside the ice cream social universe. Mm. Uh, who I guess has a magician character, yeah. But um, I don't know. There, there's a long story I believe that goes along with it. But uh, I think where I, he like plays a magician, but he doesn't know any tricks. But I think he's actually going to uh, learn a real trick, learn one of Brian's actual tricks, uh, and then perform it at some point. I don't. I don't. A hundred percent know. Cool. But cool. that's yeah. that. Uh, hey, Scoops have been a lot of good friends as we deal with Twitch stuff and they just got onto Twitch and, and, uh, cause they live stream all of their shows. So, uh, that's exciting. And we're looking forward to that in, uh, uh, in, in a week or so. Uh, yeah, that's heyscoops.com. So check it out. Uh, Brant. Yo. So I'm seeing that you got a little bit of equipment. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about it. Sure. I, um, I don't know how much I have to say. I got, uh, I got, so I got a monitor calibrator. Nice. Which, is, which is fun. I've been meaning to have one for a, a million years. Um, I've I've manually calibrated my monitors in the past, and it usually gets like close enough. Um, but since I have a dual monitor set up, they're they're never like quite exactly right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and now they're perfect. Now they're great. Uh, what, what, one of the big problems was uh, my primary monitor was was too bright, and I could bring I could bring the brightness down, but I it's it's hard to know when it's when it's just right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this thing you just you just hook it up, and then you put it on the monitor. It has it reads the light levels and color levels and everything, and then mm. it just says, "Hey, change it this much," and then also will create a color profile. Uh, for your system and automatically implement that, uh, and they look great, and they're they're both exactly the same, and it's very nice. That's awesome. Uh, what what brand do you do you know what brand it is? Um, I could find out. There there are, I think it's there are like two big ones. I want to say mm. just just the same as uh, with color charts because because oh, right because they're kind of standardized. Yeah, so the same companies make those. Oh, cool. Um, uh, and it also looks like you got um, uh, a Genovation pad. Is that one of those? Uh, is that one of the eight by eight like rubber button pads, or is it one of the like clicker numpad pads? It's one of the like numpad pads. Cool. Those uh, are awesome. Yeah, I want to say it's like sixteen keys, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you don't know, they're like um, they look like external numpads for like a keyboard, mm, but yeah. the buttons are blank or they have like pop off label switch uh, label spaces mm-hmm. and like I know on the one that I have you it you hook like the the end on it hooks up like a a uh, telephone like jack and it goes to USB and then you can have a program that says hey this button does this on keyboard macros that are programmed into each button or something yeah, yeah. yeah. and you can, can do, you do like really big really complicated macros oh cool so they can do one more than one step basically with a button yeah like nice. you, I think you can time stuff out even Oh, really? I think so. Hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, real quick, the, the, the calibrator I have is the X-Rite I1, nice. uh, and it's great. Um, so yeah, it's the, the, the macro pad is interesting. So as far as timing goes, I think you can just set the timing to uh, like a universal timing for, for key presses. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can't, you can't say like, oh, do these five key presses really fast and then do this one slow and then do this one fast. Uh, but you could say, hey, do all of them at 400 milliseconds apart or 200 or whatever. Mm. Um, and so I haven't found a ton of uses for it yet, but the big thing that I do use it for and it's been super helpful for is um, uh, audio control when I do my edits. Mm. So we talked about this previously. The way that I edit audio when I work on a project is you have your your audio track and I cut it up and then I select it, press G. Uh, if I want it to be loud, I will set it to normalize, do negative four decibels, enter. Uh, if I want it to be quiet, I'll do the same thing, but negative 30 decibels, enter. So now I've got, I've got buttons that are like, oh yeah, just just hit this button and it automatically sets it to negative four. Hit this button and it automatically sets it, mm-hmm. sets it to a negative 30. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got buttons that change the modes. So I typically use two different types of modes. One is normalized, which basically takes the, the loudest point and sets it at a decibel level. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I also have just adjust audio by a certain amount. So that way, if it if it ends up being too loud, I can say, oh, hit this button, and it'll automatically just pull it down three decibels. Yeah. And then once it's in that mode, I can just hit my negative four or whatever, and it'll just drop it down negative four every time I hit that. Um, mm. And so it's it's an interesting way of just swapping back and forth between modes uh, really quickly and easily. And uh, and just automatically setting setting levels where I need to have them set. Yeah. Um, nice. I haven't I haven't really found much else to use it for outside of that, but it's kind of fun. And then for the for the labels, I've just got little slips of paper that I, I wrote negative four on, and then slid it under there because I don't have a printer. That's cool. Yeah, I I got one about a year or so ago, and I was using it to do uh, basically shortcuts to do OBS scene transitions because mm. OBS you can set custom shortcuts um, but you can't the, the only thing about the Genovation pad that I don't love is that there's not like uh, th- there's not um, what is it Th- there's not like a unique key that you can say those buttons should correspond to it's like there's no way I could say here is the the, the I, well I think actually some some of what you can do is um extra F keys. So I think mm-hmm. you could do like F13 to F24. Yep. Um, but in terms of like a more than that or or something that, that could be a little more universal, there there's nothing for that, which I think is kind of tough, but it's also not the only thing that's... Uh, um, that's not the only thing that's used for. So I mean, that's also the same kind of problem that um, the Xbox Elite controller has. Yeah. Um, they, they've got paddles on the back, which are, are great. Uh, but you would say, oh, I want this game to recognize just the paddle, but you can't do that. It's like the paddle remaps to the A button or the X button, and it's like, well, that's dumb. Yeah. Uh, so you have no you have to get like custom button remapping software uh, to get that to work the way you would want it to, but even then, you're basically telling the remapping software, hey, when I pull this paddle, press the X button or something like that. Um, so it's there are weird workarounds for that. I was paddled in school as a kid. I feel like I just wow. want to throw that in there now. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You want to talk about it? You want to lay down? About to have a breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> Went to a private school. They, they did things different, you know. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, that's cool. Uh, those, uh, uh, I, I really want to look into calibration because I just got a new second monitor, um, mm-hmm. another another Acer to match the, the like 2K one that I got last year. Wow. Um, uh, but it's just ten, like it. I bought it on sale because Best Buy was doing this big sale a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the monitor, it might have been price reduced everywhere. But it was one of those items where like it, it. I'm sure it was on sale, but it was like not just a Best Buy sale, you know. Mm. Oh, not exclusive to Best Buy, like just on sale everywhere. Right. Yeah. Right. Like uh, I also ended up getting those Beats X headphones, and those are on sale everywhere, or they're price reduced. How are those, by the way? Just... Uh, I like them, but I I I like the feeling of the ear pods uh, in the ear. Uh-huh. I don't I don't love the in ear mm-hmm. rubber bat rubber bits, uh, but I think they're really cool, uh, and and they're really light. So because I know Brian's got wireless ones around but he does have like the big plastic piece you sit on your back here right well i was wondering like for jogging or something you know where you are being in motion like the yeah. ear pods tend to slip out pretty easily oh yeah i love the ear pods when you're just sitting there mm-hmm. but i was wondering if there's if the no, I other ones have they, a, they do stick in pretty well yeah. and and i think they're meant to be for exercise the one thing i would say about the the beats is that you don't want to eat while you've got them in because you hear all of your mouth. Oh, the crunching and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and it's really, it's really awful. And it's the sort of thing where, like, I've done it a couple times, and I'm like, uh, no, God, ah. this food sounds terrible. It sounds awful. <laughs> it's messing up this podcast. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's not the only equipment stuff with you, Brent. Though you also had a little bit of a foible with your camera. Yeah. Um, so I, I uh, fans fans of the podcast will remember Who? I got my Sony <laughs> A7S2. All four That's of right. them. You, you got that within the past year. Yeah, I got it in December of last year, uh, and it's very nice. It it does the job. Um, and for Modern Rogue, I thought, oh, you know, it would be cool if I did a uh, time ups of the warehouse to indicate passage of time, which yeah. which we've done before. Um, but back when I did it then, I was 
manually doing time lapse where I had a timer on my phone and then would just sit there and press the button every 10 seconds or something. Oh gosh. Uh-huh. Um, and so, and also I would have to then manually import all of the raw files into Photoshop, adjust them the way I wanted to adjust them, save them out, import all of the JPEGs into After Effects, tr- treat them as frames, mm-hmm. and then export that as a video. So it was a whole it was a whole hassle. It was a whole thing. And I was like, there has to be a better way. There has to be. So I looked into how to natively natively mm. do time lapse with the A7S. It doesn't have it? Like that seems like such a common feature. So it seems like it would be such a common feature. Because <laughs> ev- every camera's got <laughs> every something camera like on that. the planet does it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so it. for for whatever mm. reason, Sony mm. decided, hey, you know what we'll do? We'll have an app store, and then uh, and then you'll get the time lapse app oh, no. through the app store. <laughs> so you'll pay like two bucks or four bucks or something for the ability to do time lapse on this three thousand dollar camera I've got or something. That's you know. three thousand and two dollar camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, this is dumb, but all right. Like if it, if it like expedites that entire process, then sure, I'll I'll figure it out. So I got the app, and then I went out to the to the warehouse, um, and I got the time lapses that you'll see in the uh, camouflage dead drop rock episode. Yes, and um, and I did two, two two time lapses, one of the sun setting, and then one of the moon rising uh, at the warehouse. And as I was going through it, I was doing the moon rising last. Uh, obviously, the sun had set. Um, and while that was going, I noticed my my the back panel on my LCD was kind of kind of lame. It just seemed weird, mm. and so I stopped the time lapse, and the back panel just totally broke somehow. Ooh. And so it's like it's almost inverted colors, but not really. Uh, it just looks really dark and mm-hmm. grainy, and then it shows reds incredibly vibrantly. So it uh, it looks the kind HDR of, update. You it, got the HDR <laughs> app. It looks yeah, kind of like bad. Predator Vision or something. It's really weird. And yeah. the the electronic viewfinder when you when you hold it up to your eye, that looks perfect. It looks fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, all, it's got a digital viewfinder too. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Um, and like all of the footage looks totally fine, looks perfect, looks exactly how you would expect. Yeah. But that back panel is just super messed up. Mm. So I have to go send it in for repair or something. That's weird. And man. That's a bummer. That sucks. It's especially, it's, it's you would a, think they'd make it more rugged than that. Like I've I've had, oh, I don't know. It's it's Sony, so it could be of a different build quality. But like I when I have Canons, they last for a long time. Yeah, and you know, it's it's just it's just one of these weird things of like I can't help but feel like this is to- totally caused by this time lapse app because that's the <laughs> only thing that's different about my entire operation of the camera up until this point. Did you uninstall the app? I did. Uh, and, so did enough. it make you like put your payment information into your camera? Um, where do you buy feed a dollar no, bill into that? Yeah, yeah, like where do you? <laughs> so, so you've got. <laughs> It's it's a whole weird thing. So it's like Is on, it? it's on some like official Sony store thing. They've got like, uh-huh. okay, so they've got this thing called Play Memories. It's their Play Memories app. Uh, oh God, Sony, oh, yeah, that. which yeah. is horrible, right. horrible. And that's works that's, with that's, MiniDisc. That's the name of their <laughs> iPhone app. And and so you go to the website and you create an account and then you pay for the thing and you have to have you have to have a browser plugin. Mm. What? Uh, yep. And so you have to have a browser plug in and it talks to the store and then you have to have your camera plugged into your computer while while you're on the website and then you have to say install and then it I'm getting a headache it's, listening to this. It's super it's dumb. That sounds It's yeah. really bad. They should just part that it. sounds par for the course for Sony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean yeah. Uh, yeah, right? Like especially Sony's like consumer goods just like mm. whatever we so, we also made it's all downhill after the Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bought a Sony MP3 player years ago that wanted me to re-encode every MP3 I had into Sony's proprietary oh, it was like, music uh, format before it was you could like put it on. A track or something, wasn't it? Yeah. A A T R A C. Well, and that was like the rootkit shit too. That would have been around the time of the rootkit stuff. The CDs that came with the, with the rootkit, root yeah. 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 Uh, Terrific. Great. Great job, Sony. 
GG. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, have you sent it in yet? Are you? When are you planning to send it in? No. So like, I talked to their support, and they were mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, thanks. You should reset it." And I was like, oh, "Well, that doesn't turn work." It off. Um, turn it back on again. And so they were like, "And if that doesn't work, you should fill out these forms and send it to New York." And I went, well, Ooh. I might just, even though it is under warranty still, I might just take it to Precision Camera downtown. D- no, don't pay to get it repaired. It's under warranty. Yeah, but I've, I've still got a little <laughs> bit of time, so I, I don't need to act on it quite yet. But, <laughs> but it's not working. Yeah, I'll get to it. I just got Witcher to complete. <laughs> it's going to take you like... An hour to go box it up and put it in the mail, though. Okay, where do I box it up? Do I just go to the post office? Yes, go and be like, hey, I need to put this in a box. They gave me a label. Do they insure it there? The, you, you can buy insurance there, yeah. All right. UPS, UPS will do it all for you. Just oh, yeah. hand yeah, it to them. Yeah. Well, we can ship it for you. Max. You have yeah. Yeah. Max. Oh, oh man. Max. Oh, All right. X-nay I'm just going to bring Ipping it show. to the warehouse. <laughs> all right. Our stuff God, always gets there on time and safe. Oh, boy. I'm just saying. The Witcher's not going anywhere. Geralt will still be his brooding, emotionless self in an hour. I just hate shipping stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. That's why I really hated working on scam stuff when I was in charge of that. Sure. Mm-hmm. It's All fun. Right. <laughs> wow. Uh, we got uh, uh, another topic here. I read this topic, and I did not understand it because I feel like it's missing a predicate. Uh, 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 tell, tell what is this? What is this? The last one here, Brant. Some of the ways Patreon could be exploited by relying on public distribution and adapting that possibility. Is this a? Is this ironic? Is this buzzwords? Iron irony? No, no. Um, so uh, this <coughs> this this comes with a, a brief uh, a, a brief story about me using Patreon. Um, but I, I think it's kind of interesting and and weird how how. A lot of a lot of stuff is is like paywalled with Patreon, and yet we still use like a lot of um, public facing uh, 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 distribution methods. Sure, YouTube. Um, yeah, most prominently. Mm-hmm. So like uh, th- this all this all kicked off in my mind when I was doing um, when I was doing first pass edits, uh, uploading those to YouTube, uh, which is available for patrons of ten dollars and up, five dollars and up, five dollars and up. I think it's five dollars and up. Um, and it's basically the the full the full recording session of an episode with all of the camera angles uh, just largely uncut. Mm. Um, and so at at this point we we we'd had like four or five first pass edits, and I thought, oh, you know what? It might be good to have a, a playlist of of first pass edits because you could have an unlisted playlist. Right. Um, so that way, if somebody wants to just sit down and watch through all all of these, then they can do that. Um, There's no law against it, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and then I remembered uh how i accidentally stole patreon tears from friend of the show mikey newman um because he had a patreon for movies with mikey patreon.com slash movies mikey um and i i was i'm a low level supporter but i'm a supporter and i have been a supporter since like the first day he he published it sure um and one one of his reward tiers is, hey, sometimes I'll live stream my edit sessions. That that'll be fun, and you can tune into these live streams and have have contributions on the shows and stuff. And I was like, oh, great! I would love, I would love to watch that. Uh, and within like the first week, he sent out a, an email to patrons and was like, hey, here's the here's the secret place where I'm doing these live streams because uh, obviously it can't be where I usually live stream from because this is for patrons. Mm-hmm. And I was like, great. So I sat down and I watched it and I, I had a good time. And, uh, and I, I happened to s- subscribe to the, the distribution channel uh, uh, on which that was being uh, broadcast. Sure. Because I thought, well, I just, I just I want to know when this is live, of course. Right. Um, and it wasn't until I tuned into like four or five of those that it start, I started to realize that, oh, this is actually a reward tier for a much higher reward than I'm actually paying for, mm. but he accidentally sent it to lower tier rewards because sometimes, oh. sometimes on Patreon you accidentally go like, oh yeah, this is public, right. and then you're like, oh no no, this is this is actually like twenty dollars plus, 
Um, uh, and so I never got the further emails for when he was going live, except from the, me following that channel. Uh, <laughs> and then, channel. and then I started to feel really bad about it because I was like, I'm siphoning off this like <laughs> higher reward tier uh, stuff. So I was like, well, if I had this playlist of first pass edits, then if somebody was like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna save this playlist, then they could have all of the first pass edits forever for the rest of time, whether they're a patron or not. So that's interesting because on like the way we've done the exclusive live streams has been through YouTube because we can unlist YouTube live streams mm -hmm. and, and we, we just send out the notification and we choose how people get to it. Mm -hmm. um, where it sounds like the thing that Mikey was doing was something a little more like uh, privacy via obscurity, if, if, that's, if that's accurate. Uh, I mean, sort of, but also it was like, this This is about as close to an unlisted thing as you can get on that platform. Okay. And it's it's not like it was linked to any categories or anything like that. Sure. Um, and it was it was the same thing of like sending out an email of like, hey, I'm live. Here's here's the link to it. Um, but um, it's like it it was the sort of thing where you could follow that channel that was dedicated just to that purpose. Yeah. And get you know, push notifications or whatever when that channel went live. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an interesting balance between either uh, uh, setting the exclusivity of, of access or the convenience of those people to access the content. Sure, yeah. You know, like if, if someone doesn't get the email or whatever or say if that uh, service that, that uh, he uses has an app or a t some sort of TV app or a big screen app, Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if, if his thing is that, you know, it won't show up in feeds and stuff, but if you're following it, you can easily get to it. Mm -hmm. That's an easy way to get to it. Where, like, with us, there really isn't a way unless you, like, start watching it somewhere else and then go to your YouTube TV app and then you check the history and, and then the link is there in your history, assuming you have that turned on and you're logged in on both. Like, it's a con there's a convenience element. Yeah, and I've thought about doing stuff like, you know, Vimeo has password protected stuff, so if you if you really want to kind of crack down on that, that would be an extra barrier to entry. I guess so. Um, but there's there's also the concern of the fact that th there are two types of uh, uh, payment systems with Patreon. There's uh, paying back the month and paying forward the month. Um, sure. The thing about paying forward the month is if you start on the 20th of a month, you're paying right then and there, immediately the second you pledge, and you're paying for a week worth of pledging or I, whatever. I, I don't know that it's paying forward. I think it's just pay on pledge, and then you continue to pay back. Well, it... That's my understanding of the pay, the pay on pledge, to prevent piracy, or, yeah, piracy of, like, images and, and so the stuff. So the, the following month, they wouldn't pay anything? And then they right. would wait another month to pay? I, that is my understanding of it. Okay, interesting. Because, yeah, the way we have it right now is just everybody pays the first of the month. Um, yeah. And the problem with that is, theoretically, somebody could just say, yeah, I just pledge whatever, and then I get all of the digital rewards and then cancel their pledge before they're charged. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you were going to say something, Jeff. What's up? Oh, well, I was just thinking back to uh, when I started my Patreon, I had a, a few people early on who thought they were real smart is that people would like the video or comment on it and then that would get posted to their Google Plus account mm -hmm. which was public and then oh and so people, people that were super people. fans would just find the people that were already pledging Patreon oh wow and then just roll back into the unlisted YouTube video that mm -hmm. way and I thought about for a long time how you would solve that and eventually I had to decide that like if a person is dedicated enough to just try everything to get access to your bonus content, right. they probably will find a way, and that it's yeah. probably not worth your time to spend, you know, like a huge amount of uh, uh, unreasonable stress trying to keep people out because there's always going to be some scumbags who, you know, pledge the minimum amount or whatever, or try to figure out ways to come in. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and it's, I, it's I think, just an interesting yeah. dilemma to me. I think, and and I think we're doing enough stuff that is like. Um, not just how you view it, yeah. In in terms of of gating stuff. So like when we've done when we did the live stream uh, for last month of like doing taking questions and stuff. Those questions came from 
we, we had one or two from the people who were watching live, but the majority of them came from people who posted on Patreon on that post. Or, uh, uh, you know, when we see comments on the, li- on, on the unlisted YouTube streams, those are people who found those links because we emailed it out that day to those, that level of Patreon. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it is an interesting balance to strike between those things, between a convenience of access um, and just how complicated you want to make the system versus, you know, uh, uh, how how strict and, and, and not strict, but like there, there's value to saying like, no, you these people are paying for this. So it needs they, we need to set a, a barrier some somewhere. You just send the Krav Maga people to go rough them up. Yeah, that'll, that sounds <laughs> that'll work. That'll, that'll do it. But yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of a weird thing where if if you like build your own website and you have like a premium paywall for certain things, then it's a little bit easier to enforce some of that stuff. So something like giant bomb, you know, they have, they have all their premium videos and you can only get those if you, if you pay the subscription fee. Mm -hmm. Um, and then all they would really have to worry about is people who, uh, are paying subscribers who Mm -hmm. then, download the video and re-upload it somewhere public. Mm. Right. Which mm-hmm. is like, um, well, yeah. no one's really going to do that, probably. I, a, a little I, bit, but not not like in not mass. Huge. Yeah, not huge. Not yeah. huge, right. I mean, that's that's how I got into their premium stuff. I saw people uploading Filthy on Professional Pirates. Fridays. Oh, <laughs> and wow. so, But also, that was like, now they have, they have free trials, which they didn't have back then. And sure. it was basically like that. But you can't download on the free trial now. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell Jeff that you mm-hmm. are pirating. Do it. I'm going to do <laughs> it. I've been a paying Jeff, subscriber <laughs> for however many years now. Yeah. Um, any last any last things that we didn't talk about, guys? Jeff, uh, David, Max, anything you feel well, like? Well, we've started the Twitter up again for scam stuff. So oh, Twitter yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah. Dot com slash scam stuff. Congratulations. We may or may not post we advance, coupons. Yeah, advance uh, yeah. notices and discount codes Ooh. and stuff. So. Very cool. Um, so that's at scam stuff on Twitter. At scam stuff, and then if you're not on the email list, mm-hmm. you got to get on the email list because the email list is where all the good stuff happens. Um, in fact, we've never said this yet anywhere, but in two emails ago, there was actually a hidden discount code. There was an Easter egg in the email. If you um, oh. highlighted a section of text, you would see a um, oh. uh, the background cool. color or the foreground color of the text were the same, but if you highlighted it, it would contrast and you get a little discount code. So sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, look through the look through the emails, and then uh, what else? Um, what else we got? When are codes coming back? Oh God! Oh no. yeah, no. for the look, for the uh, pen comments. So, <laughs> yeah, I, we especially I don't know. We we were ramping down pr- product videos as, yeah. as launches slowed down a bit. Yeah. Uh, and so that meant that there was no weekly game for people to play with the secret well, codes. And I think that stuff will probably come yeah. back. But it's it's hard because like right when it happened, I was like, you need to trust that it will come back at some point. Mm. Please don't get upset that right. we're not giving you a yeah. Caesar code every week. Right. You know? But almost every week there's like one comment that's like, I miss the codes. It's always I something. I, I know. Yeah. We, we wanted to give us, them, but give we us another few cool. weeks. And it's yeah. it's got to be right. Well, Maybe on Twitter yeah. that'll be a thing. Oh, maybe. That would be interesting. Follow us. Because we've talked about... Um, like integrating them into the modern rogue episodes mm. before. I think we've talked about it on this show yeah. and like, I don't feel great about, like, I feel like that is breaching a layer of the actual show to, to, to uh, be a part of this temp, this, this very specific promotion or time timed thing. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, I think it's tough when it's, it's not referencing or when it's not just referencing, but actually injecting something into the show yeah. that is artificial to the content itself. Um, uh, which is why the, the giveaway videos and the product videos are, are very good mediums for that. But it's, uh, it's about for me, like, you know, keeping, being able to keep that purity of the modern rogue videos and also, uh, having a regular vehicle where people can understand that that's somewhere that they can find these things. Right. Cause with, yeah. when, when we're doing the weekly giveaways, it's like, we would say it every week, you know, there's always a secret hidden code. It's going to be on these things, which comes out on Fridays mm-hmm. or so. And that's where you can look for it. And if it's like, Oh, well sometimes it's on Twitter. Sometimes it's on, you know, in a modern rug video. Sometimes it's on these less regular product explanation videos. It's, it's like, that is, that is a hard sell to people. I think who want to do it regularly. Right, they and want to I, just know where to look for it. Right, right. Yeah. and 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 it, because it it's 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 you you can't expect everyone to watch everything. It it just does not what happens. Mm-hmm. So being able to say, 
when it comes back, you can expect it in in a way that makes sense. Uh, at least in my mind of 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 where those are at. Yeah, well, I think they sense. expect them in that pen comet on the on the modern robe, right? Uh, well, that that's where the giveaways are now. We, the codes, I mean, the weren't they? Uh, oh, that's right. We were doing them in the codes. Or we were doing giveaway codes in the modern yeah. room for for a few months at least, and then I, and then I think the question was like, uh, because we were only doing codes, we weren't doing the general give- giveaways. Uh, so wherever the codes come back will probably be their new home. Is the idea right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, somewhere that is can be consistent for everyone. Consistent, because I think the reason we stopped doing it was like, well, if we're only doing the code, or if we're only doing the giveaway for people who do the codes, then that's a very specific set of people who only know that this thing even happens and have to solve it and then are put in a giveaway. I feel like I should be talking to you like this. like <laughs> Right, <laughs> no, exactly. This is a good visual gag for the yeah. audio podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and so I, I think the idea was just like, well, let's open it up because part of the giveaways is to uh, find people who are interested in the mailing list uh, and, and, and staying in touch with all of the, the videos that come out. Um, and, and I think for as semi-permanent as I would like the codes to be as like, uh, as some sort of institution, I think if, if there, are, if the sword of Damocles is always like, is this bringing in enough email people, it needs to be in a place where it's safe, even if the question is no, mm. yeah, you know? Oh, the, I see the, what yeah. you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. For sure. Like yeah. it, one, the day that it comes, like the codes are not doing well enough. Uh, that needs to stop, or for whatever whatever happens, and and and, and it moves around. Mm-hmm. Like I really think that the 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 audience that we had that was engaging on it mm-hmm. was so it was so engaged that it it needs to have more than one tendril fi- tendril to to everything else being the store. You know, people know that those codes are coming from the NSA, right? We're we're kind of like that's right. It's we like recaptcha, like, but for the NSA, we <laughs> just have, we we solve that's right. Their we get problems. the facts yeah. uh, on Thursday, yeah. and then we type it in. Yeah. you know, it's not very hard actually at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's a little bit of a code update. Yeah. I guess we haven't had one of those in, in a while, probably since uh, since the weekly giveaways. Uh, say five months, right? Yeah. yeah so it's normal. been a while. Uh, uh, also, recently we had a hurricane. Oh, oh. We didn't talk about that. I mean, Two we, we, we only got yeah, the very right. the very edge of it, but uh, the one that came here. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Um, so I'm I was out in Atlanta when the gas shortage happened, and prices are still wild, like they are fifty cents higher than they were three yeah. weeks ago. I mean, Jeff, it, it, Jeff looks uh, exhausted. Just me <laughs> saying. <that. laughs> were you waiting in line for gas? No, no. I, I found a place last night, um, but I have a car that only takes premium gas, which makes it uh. like. Sucks. Yeah, <laughs> you, would, you would think well, that would be, and the fact that I live in, like, you know, like on the other side of town from yeah. this place, yeah. So. yeah, you would think it'd be easier to find premium, but that's also probably something they keep less stock of. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, that's what I thought too. But Max was saying that regular is the only stuff you can find now. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. all the Texans drive around these supercars. Yes, yeah. that and uh, original leaded, just leaded gas, <laughs> <Yeah. again. laughs> plentiful. <laughs> uh, there, there's a Seven Eleven on my way home. Uh, 7-Eleven gas station and I don't know if it's a function of they redid their overhang or if it's because of the gas stuff mm-hmm. but their sign well, they have two signs on their corner one of them is down is gone and the other one is not on, is not turned on it's mm-hmm. like an electronic sign so it's like I never see anybody there and I don't know if it's because they have no gas or because people literally don't know how much it costs right and yeah. it's like oh are you are you okay? Because because yeah. the thing about it, the only reason I care is because they had really good a good they had cheap gas. I thought you were gonna say because the the tacos that they had inside or something <laughs> no, were made. I, the, I, I will the fuck hot dogs. With, I will fuck with some Seven yeah. Eleven food, but yeah. <laughs> those two for two, the two for two two dollar hot dogs. Actually, it's right. funny. A couple days like just when the gas shortage started, uh, there's a gas station by my house that's being turned into a Seven Eleven, but it's not open yet. Uh-huh. They turned on the sign and they had the prices for the gas read Seven Eleven, and when I first saw it, I was just <laughs> like. What? Yeah. Seven bucks a gallon. Jeez. Yeah, I was hearing about people waiting in line for gas. Mm-hmm. It's, it's yeah. Uh, on the drive down, actually, I almost ran into I I oh, I let it get down to about E, and then I pulled over in Gerald, which is just a little north of Austin, and all of the gas stations Ooh. in Gerald were out. And I thought, is this how it's going to be as I continue to move south? And uh, yeah. the answer was no. So that's the end of the story. So like. <laughs> I, I missed it. Like, 
is there is is it was it just a hurricane that like diverted a lot of oil shipments? It it lifted up the gas. In what the I, hurricane. Like the tides. <laughs> yes. I don't I don't That's know. Yeah. What I've heard is that it's completely artificial. I've heard that too. Is that there is no problem. It's just that everybody decided there was a problem and they all went to go tank up on the same day. Mm. Well, it was also the oil refineries, I believe, off coast, too. I read a thing that said that, that state officials said that there are, yes, the oil refineries in Houston are yeah. not working right now, but there are plenty of, like, reserves oh, in, sure. in, yeah. in, in the state that nobody needs to go out, like, right this yeah. day and totally tank up. So yeah. Wake up, sheeple. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Is like Because I, I, I saw such conflicting Thanks, stuff Mr. on Reddit. Robot. I was just like, no, I work at the gas station, and we literally – we all are getting getting bits and bytes, and then other people are like, I work at a gas station. We're getting our regular shipments every couple of days. Mm, yeah. And it's like, it's hard to parse any of that. I mean, the places right. by my house were out, but they were out every day and then refilled the next day. Right. So Because they yeah. get refueled really, really regularly is what I understand. Right. Yeah. So. Shout out to our friends in Houston. I've, we've yes. got people out there that uh, sustained a lot of flooding damage. Um and some that got really lucky, even though I, I remember their house being like yeah. down, like you'd have to drive off the road down and to get to the, under the driveway, and their house is fine. Wow! And I'm like, what kind of crazy drainage do you have around your house? But apparently they uh, have a moat. They, uh, yeah, they, they constructed a moat last minute. And then my, uh, I had a, a, a my my brother's girlfriend's um, parents lived in Rockport. And uh, their house is gone, just completely oh, gone. And so, uh, yeah, it was it was a pretty tough time for some people. But um, I'm in a new place, and I got a new sofa. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. Yeah. so fuck them. I just yeah. got to worry about gas. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, and especially in Florida and and in in Cuba and and uh, uh, the, the Dominican Republic and all the other places that have been hurt by Irma. It's really a tough hurricane season. And then there's Jose right behind that, right? Right, which is possibly coming for the eastern seaboard no way great i think i think i heard that it could be aiming towards new york but i, I think it's also i don't know i'm not a weatherman i'm, yeah. I'm not i don't keep up <laughs> Wait, with what? Events, right <laughs> all these lies <laughs> why did we even hire you <laughs> uh all right uh any off-topic stuff are we uh, i know brant's playing witcher anybody's jumping into any video games or uh d2 marathon up in here Destiny 2. Oh, I thought That's you were going to say it's Mighty Ducks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, on occasion. Do they have power instead of light now or something like that? Yeah, some, I don't know. They changed everything. Yeah, it's power. Know, okay. more, it's, it's better, but okay. it's still just Destiny. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, I don't know. David, are you a gamer? I play a series of chess problems every day. <laughs> really? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh. I, here's, the, here's the thing about uh, games is I, I, I love them uh, on the face, and I sort of project myself into the situation of getting into them to the point where you just won't see me, and it'll be like it'll be like I'm an addict or something. Like you'll just hear excuses for why I wasn't somewhere, and you'll go, "He's really into, you know, I don't know, Splinter Cell or something." You know, Whatever, just, he's yeah. just going through the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. well, I will grab something old like uh, Adventure Island from the original NES. It was oh, kind of like oh, a Mario yeah. knockoff, but uh, you mean old. Yeah, like the original. Yeah, yeah. Right. but I found uh, an emulator for uh, for um, uh, uh, the desktop, right, and then mm -hmm. the little um, module for the Adventure Island. I played through all that, and it was just one of those things where I'm, I'm sort of, uh, for those who don't know, like I don't say this lightly. I probably am OCD, though I haven't been officially like diagnosed. And so if I start something, I tend to like if I start a series and I start watching the series, you it's finish it's, that. Yeah, it's very hard for me to like not finish it to not have that like. Uh, completion moment mm -hmm. um so i i try to self-discipline myself by just uh solving five chess problems a day <laughs> okay yeah yeah. 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 Um, yeah yeah what's up absolver and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. last day of june were both really good i uh, haven't seen last day of june but i've seen a lot about absolver absolver is really good but it's like a martial arts dark souls is what i've heard the comparison to Dark Souls are <laughs> not the best, but sure. no, it's it's really fun. It's basically like a really um, intricate third-person melee action game where they have different styles that you can customize and you can go online and like work together with people. That, it's not super expensive. That sounds fun. The yeah. whole stance thing of, of Absolver reminds me of For Honor. Where you've got the three, the three positions for your sword. You actually have four but positions. But you have four for this martial arts. Yeah, weapon. but the way that it works, having played both of those, um, Absolver has 
three different styles. It has a whole thing where if you successfully block a move, then you learn that move, and then you can create oh. custom oh. decks or combos for each position that flow into each other, and then you can make your own school that other people can like subscribe to to oh. learn your moves. It's really, wow. really cool. That's cool. Um, last day of June is like Groundhog Day if it was really depressing. And then <laughs> Yakuza Kiwami is a $30 shot-for-shot shot remake of the original Yakuza, which yeah. how could you not like that? So. I, I'm, I, nice. I finished Yakuza 0 uh, after you let me borrow it mm-hmm. um, earlier this year. And they always just do a great job of translating those games, except for the main story. I need a flow chart to understand <laughs> this organization. So much of that game is like, not bureaucracy, but it's like, ranking rank and file like you know i'm the corporal and, oh yeah and i'm the chief of mm. the house but i am the head of the the clan and i am the head of the dojo yeah uh, and and so like those stories go on just a little too long and are a little a little complicated but i'm excited for kiwami and they're making they're doing kiwami too mm-hmm. and what i found game. uh really interesting about kiwami was that i was watching a stream of somebody playing it on the ps2 and the cutscenes are identical. Like yeah. the camera angles are identical. Wow. They just look way better. And the dialogue is completely the same. So it's yeah. one of the most faithful recreations of a game that I've seen since probably like the mm. Master Chief Collection. I think Halo. Eurogamer did a shot for did a, a comparison between the original and the new Kiwami game. Mm. Uh, but it's using their new engine, which is supposed to be even better than the one in Zero, because Zero was using their old engine. It's a little. I don't. I don't feel like the lighting effects are quite as good as they were in Zero. But I don't but, know. But I, I think. I think it's more like more less transi- transitioning into fighting and more less loading is what I understand of the differences between the engines. Yeah, the loading was. I. I don't even remember it. So yeah. it wasn't a big deal. But yeah, uh, I got. I got the new Hot Shots Golf. Everybody's Golf. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, How and. Was it? I like I like Hot Shots golf games, mm. and it really hurts me that it is marginally worse than these games that came out almost a decade ago. Mm. That's too bad. You know they're doing they're doing all these on all this online stuff, and you're playing in real time with other people, so you're like ghosts on other people's courses. Mm-hmm. But the benefit of that is is very small, and and uh, it takes a very long time to progress through that game. Uh, it is. Uh, you know, it takes a long time to get a golf cart. Uh, it takes a long time to get to the second course or to the second to the back half of the first course. You know, um, it is it is very slow in that regard. Um, and and I think when you have too many people in your online game, you, the performance really tanks, mm. uh, which is really tough because you're trying to sell me on this whole open online course thing, and it's that's tough. But it's still it's still Hot Shots, and it's still the really good Hot Shots physics engine. So I don't. Um, I'm just conflicted. Oh, and if you if you have a Switch, Mario and Rabbits is weird. And I've heard it's good. Totally yeah. buy it. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I don't uh, have a Switch. Also, my note, Jeff, you said that one game was like Groundhog's Day, but depressing. Yeah. But there's literally a montage in Groundhog's Day where he fails to commit suicide like 20 times. Uh, but, but the end yeah, of but Groundhog Day is uplifting. Like, yeah, I'm just saying kind of. there are some there are some some, some depths to to uh, some elements. You of need to recognize yeah. the 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 spectrum of emotions that Groundhog's Day is is portraying. That, that is true. That is true. <laughs> go go play this game. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, it's yeah, yeah. It like it really reminds me of the beginning of Up. If it was made by somebody who didn't have any happiness in their life because but it was good i don't know hmm. cool yeah cool uh, i did like that documentary that came out about people that were making games and oh like, yeah um, do you remember the new blue and white cover or something uh, maybe somebody else can it's was, it was really really good um yeah. was it do you know how recent was it i want to say it was probably five years ago oh, okay maybe five or six years oh. ago oh uh probably indie game the movie yeah indie game oh, the movie okay. that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, yeah, yeah that's a pretty good that movie good, right? and it's like that's yeah. a really good like career time for all of those different people mm-hmm. between like team meet who were like at the height right. of 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 their careers you have a little bit of jonathan blow who was uh uh in coming right off of uh uh, Braid. Braid, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then... Phil Fish. Phil Fish, right, with Fez. Yeah. <laughs> before oh. he fucking pieced out. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
uh, a good on, uh, not good on him, but I, I respect that he's still like uh, not gone. That's going to sound like I don't like him being around because I think he's very talented. But he he said, I'm done with the Internet. And then he's still done with the Internet. And I respect that. I think that if you create content on the Internet, you always have this one day where you're just like, you know what? I'm going to show them. I'm just going to say, fuck all you. And I'm going to delete everything. and I'm going to fucking go home. Right. Except that he actually did he it. He did all of that. So. <laughs> yeah, no. Jeez. Like, it was like the week they announced Fez 2, right? Yeah. And then the company that he built around it had to say, yeah, Fez 2 is canceled. Sorry about it. He left by. Uh, yep. Uh, which is tough. Sad. Um, but it is, it is, uh, the, the, the problem with an online connected community is not the people, it is the scale. And when you are uh, the height of uh, the spotlight in, in those communities, you get all the good and all of the bad. Mm. Um, not to mention that whole game had a Rocky. It, it's a good movie. Check out Indie Game the movie. Yep. Yeah. And if, if you like documentaries about video games, two recommendations for you. Right. One, Ahoy just put out a uh, an hour long investigative journalism doc on Polybius, the uh, mythical game that uh, very likely doesn't exist. Except, except, except in the one game, they uh, the guy who just but, yeah. Except the guy who made Tempest made a game called Polybius. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's Jeff touched upon Minter. in the doc. Mm. Oh, cool. Um, and it's it's really great. Um, and then uh, no clip. no clip just turned a year old Woo. like yesterday or today today actually. Um, cool. And so go check that out youtube.com slash no clip. It's really great. Does anybody notice how Brant has a halo behind him? He's the only angelic <laughs> one with the, <laughs> with the light emanating <laughs> from By behind. Design. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Bizarre Briefing. Thank you everybody for checking out the show uh we're gonna do plugs we're gonna do plugs like we normally do in reverse chronological order so uh david is there some somewhere you would like to send people who might be interested in finding out more about you oh well uh today or tomorrow probably tomorrow i'll post a new episode of minimum and you can see that by going to i think it's bit.ly slash minimum podcast try that see if that goes anywhere or just, or check just out in you your... know you can just google it right yeah, yeah. it's it's in it's in <laughs> itunes it's thing. in overcast uh, uh, and, this is really uh, cool, Brian. Brian's talked it up so much, and I really mean keep meaning to get into it. But it's it's about a, a distilling talks and and, and yeah, podcasts. basically scour the world of podcasts in personal development, life hacking, business, motivation, and productivity, and distill them all into one tiny digestible episode. Very cool. That's actually what I say in the, in the <laughs> yeah, in the, but yeah. That's it. So good. Awesome. Check it out. Check it out. Minimum. Thank uh, you, Jeff. Uh, RageSelect dot com. Um, we do let's plays. Uh, we got one up today for the Don't Not Twice VR game on the PlayStation 4. And Ooh. as soon as I get home, I actually got a second VR video to put up. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. Very cool. Look forward to that. Max? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, <laughs> DJ Old Fashion, my latest musings about whatever is going on. Uh, you can also catch me on Twitch, streaming, seeing my ass kicked in the Crucible, Destiny 2. Good, uh, fun thing. So mm. you can follow me and very criticize cool. me. Go on it. Awesome. So. Uh, mm. Brant, I know, again, it's not proper, but... Uh, Twitter.com slash Gadwag. That's G-A-T-O-W-A-G. Twitch.tv slash Gadwag. Um, Instagram.com slash Gadwag. Instagram.com slash Modren Rouge. I don't... Okay, if we're going to talk about <laughs> what? names... Oh, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> if we're going to talk about names of stuff... Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I love I love it as a joke. Modern I love Modern Rouge yeah. as the as like the joke account for this so for the show. Uh -huh. And I know someone else has Modern Rogue, right? It's some and uh, and the Modern Rogue and the Modern Rogue. Really? Well, what yeah. about Modern Rogue show? Or oh, Modern mm. Rogue YT or something? Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's that's a tough one. That's a tough pill to swallow, Mister Titles. I mean. It's misspelled often enough it, it that really, it might yeah, as well be. Yeah, yeah, no, not from true. us though. We can't. Uh, we can't endorse that. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. It's it's, it's also a while. It's uh, also not like a thing I'm pushing super hard. Mm -hmm. If if it's mm -hmm. a thing that like at the end of every episode, Brian is like, "Hey, check us out on instagramcom slash modern rogue or whatever," then <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> we, we would make it a bit more respectable. <laughs> mm -hmm. But like yeah. this is just this is just a fun little thing that I post like one or two things to per week. Mm -hmm. So. I'll just say like we go to these shoots a lot, and people are always like, "So what's your what's your Insta yeah. or what's mm -hmm. what's your Twitter really? or Facebook?" Yeah, we've had that happen with the Longsword guys. Uh, I I've, I've not heard one person ask. I definitely maybe, heard maybe I'm just guys. not around when they ask. Mm -hmm. Maybe because mm -hmm. um, they all they want to post photos of of them doing stuff too, and they want to tag 
us in it. And so, but also we haven't had an Instagram account until a couple of weeks ago, right? Because just nobody thought to make one, yes. or, or had the time. Yeah, that's yeah, that's you got it. That's the one. The time. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch. Brightcast B R Y C S. Uh, you can also see me streaming here on twitch.tv slash night attack every so often. Uh, I write bits and stuff for the night attack podcast. So look that up in your favorite podcatcher. This show is called the bizarre briefing. Uh, if you want to find more previous episodes, links to all of our good stuff, um, uh, check out uh, bizarrebriefing.com or go to youtube.com slash scam stuff to see the video version. Uh, we are live. We try to be live at, uh, near the end of the month to, to recap the previous month. Uh, this past week, I want to thank everybody for for uh, 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 putting up with me. I, we delayed so that we could be on the other side of Dragon Con, and then I got sick. Um, and so we are now, oh, man, in the middle of no, September. Yeah, so our next yeah, episode yeah. is oh, in perfect. two weeks. Our next episode no, will fine. probably be in about two weeks. Uh, but that's live. But, uh, of course, you can always catch it up anytime at BizarreBriefing.com or your favorite podcatcher of choice. Uh, so that is going to do it for the August 2017 edition of the Bizarre Briefing. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>